everything changes. Hi, it's Miss Alyssa. Hi from Miss Jordan. Hi, it's Miss Jamie. Hi, it's Miss Anna. Hi, it's Miss Wendy. Hey you guys, my name is Miss Jordan and I'm here from RPC. I wanted to say welcome no matter what campus you're coming from. Maybe you go to the West End campus, maybe you're from Missouri City, or maybe you know me and you've seen me before at our Richmond campus. No matter who you are, where you're coming from, I'm so excited that you're here today and I'm so happy to meet you. Hey guys, it's October. It is the start of fall. I love this season, I love this time of year. We've been talking about this word we started last week and that word is integrity. And integrity is choosing to be truthful with what you do and what you say. And I don't know about you, but I've had some times in my life where it seems like it might be more convenient to not tell the whole truth, or maybe to bend the truth, because I was worried about getting in trouble or having a consequence for my actions. Have you ever felt like that before? Well, in our true Bible story today, we're gonna to talk about how important it is to have integrity so that people around us can trust us so they know that we're a person of our word, that we're honest in what we say and what we do, and we own up to our mistakes, right? Everybody's made mistakes before, and sometimes we're not going to do the right thing, but the important part when that happens is that we are honest about it. Here's the other thing. Being honest keeps us close to God. We want to be close to God. God already knows what's in our mind. He already knows what's in our hearts, so we can't hide from that, right? He already knows the truth of what we're thinking even before we say it. So being honest keeps us close to God, and it's the best way for us to choose to act and to think. When we say what we do, we wanna be honest. So come along with me, we are gonna get started, but first I have a challenge for you. You might have noticed already that there was a little friend on the screen, a little feathery friend. I want you to count the chickens. Today's game is count the chickens. So tell me how many you found by the end of the video. So far we've had one, so we're all starting on the same number. There's gonna be more throughout this video. Whoever guesses the number of chickens right is gonna be entered into win a pizza delivered to their house this week. <laughs> Sounds great, right? So count the chickens, put it in the comments below when you're done watching and come along. It's time for worship. Stand up, here we go. I'm closer to you, but I feel like I'm so far away. Cause I let my fear, let my fear get in front of my face.
Okay, you guys, maybe you've never been to the Richmond campus, but we have animals that live here. Some of those animals are chickens, which has inspired my challenge for you today. So I just wanted to take you by the chicken coop and introduce you to some of our friends. There are chickens and goats. This is the giant chicken coop. You see one down there? I'll insert a pic here. Okay. So our chicken friends live here. There's donkeys, there's goats. I just thought maybe if you've never been to the Richmond campus, it would be fun to kind of take you on a tour. It's kind of windy and there's feathers everywhere. Check it out. Here is, ooh, I'm getting close. You see him? Okay, anyway, those are our chickens. Welcome to Richmond campus. And if you haven't been here in a while, the chickens probably miss you. You should totally come up and say hi to them. I wanted you to know something that has nothing to do with chickens and that has a lot to do with integrity and is super duper important, okay? Here's the thing. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, no matter what sin it is, no matter if you told a lie, God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to pay the price for all those bad choices so that you and I would be able to have a meaningful relationship with him and that we could have forgiveness. So all we have to do when we mess up, well first we have to try our best not to make those bad choices, but he knows they're going to happen sometimes because we are not perfect. And when it does happen, all we have to do is ask for forgiveness. So our integrity, it's all up to us, right? The choices that we make I can't blame anyone else but me for the choices that I make. So if I choose to tell a lie, or I choose to do something that's dishonest, I'm the one that has to take responsibility. And so then I go to God and I ask for forgiveness, and he takes that all the way. That's pretty amazing, right? What a special gift. Oh look, we have friends. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 John, chapter 1. Verse 9. One of Jesus' closest friends, the Apostle John, shared important words from God in one of his letters. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, He will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Let's see how this truth might play out today. Tori could barely contain her excitement when she showed her dad the small plastic rectangle with her face on it, her brand new driver's license. See, I can drive myself now. If you had a car. Mom said I can borrow her car some days. If you pay for gas. If I pay for gas. Cell phone. Phone off while I'm driving. Tori held up her phone and shut it off. That's right, and. No passengers, no driving after 9 p.m., Full stop at every stop sign, music at a moderate volume. I got it. I guess you do. So can I borrow mom's car to go play tennis with Keisha? Please? Be home by nine. Thanks, dad. Even though Tori had been driving with her mom and dad for months now, her stomach did a flip when she first started the car. Driving carefully out of the driveway, her hands white knuckled on the steering wheel for the first mile until she pulled into the spot in the tennis courts at the high school. She was almost relaxed. Her best friend, Keisha, waved. <laughs> nice park job. Tori hopped out and checked her spacing. Yeah, okay, I'm a little crooked, but there's no one else here. The two friends played for more than an hour before Tori checked time. Oops, gotta get home. By the time Tori had stowed out her gear and fiddled with the temperature controls, Keisha was already gone. Here goes. As Tori backed the car out of the spot, she reached over to adjust the radio. I cannot deal with mom's music. Oh no. Tori braked fast. She put the car in park and hopped out. She had just hit the light pole and left a small dent in the bumper. It's not very big. Tori reached for her phone to call dad, but she had already turned off her phone for the drive. I I'll just tell them when I get home. 
Tori stayed tense the whole way home. Oh, they'll never let me borrow the car again. But it's just a small bend, and Mom's car is really old anyway. Dad was working on his Jeep in the garage when Tori pulled in. Hey, sweetie, how was it? Tori opened up her mouth to tell Dad about the dent, but she couldn't seem to do it. Fine, great. My serve's getting a lot better. Tori avoided Mom, too. She tried to go straight to her room and read, but she couldn't focus. I might as well go to bed. Most evenings, Tori used a gratitude app on her phone as a reminder to thank God for the good things in her day. Uh, Friday, let's see. But Tori didn't want to think about her day or talk to God at all. Finally, she turned off the light, but even so, she couldn't fall asleep. Next morning, she came down to find Dad making French toast. Maple syrup or strawberries and whipped cream. Both. Where's Mom? She went out to get groceries. Should be back any minute. As Tori sat down to her favorite breakfast, memories of the dented bumper started flooding back. I guess I'm not really that hungry right now. The garage door opened. Mom shouldered her way inside, carting heavy groceries. Would you believe it? Someone dinged my bumper in the parking lot and took off. Tori's heart sank. She wished she could simply disappear. Did you see it happen? No, and they didn't leave a note. Hit and run. I'll take a look. Uh, Mom? Mom glanced up and saw Tori. Hi, Tor. I didn't mean to rain on your morning. What's up? Uh, nothing. I, I mean, I, I'm gonna go out and rake some leaves. That would be super helpful. Rakes against the back wall. Tori couldn't meet Mom's eyes when she walked out the door. She raked as hard and as fast as she could, but she couldn't sweep away what happened. It's not like I lied, ex exactly. Oh, who am I kidding? Unlocking her phone, Tori scrolled through her messages for a message from her small group leader, Lisa, that she had sent weeks ago. Wanted to share. Oh, here's the verse. But God is faithful and fair. If we confess our sins, he will forgive our sins. He will forgive every wrong thing we have done. He will make us pure. Tori scanned the verse again and sighed. She dropped her rake and plopped right in the middle of her leaf pile. So, um, God, I really messed up. I mean, you know all about it, but I dented mom's car and I hid the truth. I lied. I'm really sorry. As Tori lay in the scratchy leaves, staring up at the bright blue sky, she felt a sense of peace for the first time all day. Thank you, God. After a few minutes, Tori scrambled to her feet, brushed the leaves off, and went towards the house. Mom, Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Tori knew she'd be paying to fix the car, and she might lose driving privileges for a while but it was worth the cost to know she wasn't hiding the truth anymore. Okay guys, I'm back. I have made it to the other side of campus. See the cross, this is back where we started. I have a memory verse to do with you guys. Memory verses are amazing because they're a little part of the Bible that we can memorize to keep in our heart and in our mind to take with us no matter where we are. So this one starts like this. Anyone who lives without blame, get your L's out for live, Anyone who lives without blame, you can pretend to walk or actually walk, walk safely. Here I go. But anyone who takes the crooked path will get caught. Hold your hands out like a Bible. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Okay, let's try it again together. Ready? Get your L's out. Do it this time without stopping. Anyone who lives without blame will walk safely. But anyone who takes the crooked path will get caught. Proverbs chapter 10, verse nine. And remember, when you're looking this up in your Bible, you can go to the very beginning, there's a table of contents. It's like a giant list of all the books of the Bible. There's 66 books in the Bible. So you'd find Proverbs, then you go to that page number, then you'd find the big 10, it'll be really bold and big. And then underneath the big 10, there'll be a little nine. That is how you will look up this exact memory verse in your Bible. If you don't have a Bible at home, everybody can find one on the internet. You can find one on a phone, on an iPad, on a computer. You can look it up through your Holy Bible app or just by Googling the verse Proverbs 10, 9. So cool, right? We can find the Bible in God's Word anywhere. Hey, I had so much fun with you today. Don't forget to count all the chickens that popped up in the video, not the actual chickens that I showed you in the pen. 
just the ones that popped up on the screen. How many of those chickens were there? Post it in the comments below and one lucky winner is gonna get pizza delivered to their house. Let's close in prayer today. I had so much fun with you and I can't wait to see you back next week. Oh wait, friends, we have announcements. Check it out. All right, announcement number one, we are having a great pumpkin picnic at the Missouri City Campus on Sunday, October 25th. It's going to happen after the 9.30 and 11 o'clock services, and this is for all of our Missouri City and Richmond friends. Don't forget to wear your costume. It's going to be so much fun. And our Weston friends, we have a party for you too. Your pumpkin party is happening Saturday, October 24th from 10 a.m. to noon. You can find out more information and tell the grown-ups in your house to look at www.rpc.me. We'll see you there. Announcement number two is really special. We have an opportunity coming up for us to give to others. Here's the thing, we want to be a church who is generous. And that means giving of our time, our money, and our love. That is how we show people that Jesus is real and at work. New Mana is an awesome organization who works to provide meals for children in other countries who need nutritious food. So you can be a part of putting that together on November 14th, and you can sign up and get more information at www.rpc.me slash New Mana. Okay. Now we can end in prayer. Let's fold our hands and bow our heads and pray us out. God, thank you so much for this time together today where we could love you, we could worship you, we could spend time in your word, and we could learn more about how much you love us and how you've given us this amazing gift of forgiveness. Help us this week to practice integrity by being truthful with what we say and what we do. We love you. Amen. Bye, guys. I will see you really soon. Have an amazing week.